Hi, everyone. I have Deneen Mezer Smith, Vice President at NRL Federal Credit Union. I'm thrilled to have her. Hi, Deneen. Hi, Pat. Well, Deneen, I have to ask you the key question. How many years have you been managing processors and closers and all of that? <laughs> Well, actually, it's longer than I care to admit, <laughs> but let's say about 20 years in a supervisory role. I've actually worked in several different environments. Um, I've worked for banks, brokers, and presently at a credit union, but uh, the process has remained the same regardless of the institution, although the processor role has changed tremendously. Well, that's what I want to talk about, because you've worked long enough that it used to be that the processor was 100% administrative, and now that's all changed, where the processor is having a lot of communication responsibilities. So has that changed the type of skills uh, that the processor needs to have? Absolutely. I think the processors today are under much, much more pressure. They not only need the ability to juggle multiple priorities, but they also must possess good social skills and be excellent communicators. The position now requires good writing skills and good verbal communication. But most of all, I think is the need to translate mortgage terms into something that the borrower can understand. Uh, this wow. is a very, yes, this is a very challenging task for some. It is. And that raises the question, when you're really looking at your top processors, what separates them from a communication skill standpoint from others? Well, I think, Pat, that there are several basic skills that every good processor must possess. Um, first of all, a good processor must communicate early and often. As soon as that file is received in processing, a good processor will pick it up immediately and provide an introduction, setting the expectations for the entire process. It really is imperative that borrowers are informed about what to expect and how long the process will take. Um, I know it takes time, but if a processor takes the time to lay out the process up front, it will save so much time and frustration in the long run. Um, at my institution, we use templates that establish like next steps and time frames, and it's really, really helpful um, to both the processor and the customer. Well, that's really a great point, and certainly lenders should do that for sure. So, but when we talk about on the flip side, obviously part of the communication is you are dealing with difficult people at times. And so, and actually it could be difficult loan officers. So talk about the ability of the processor to handle them. Oh yes, the processor is under so much pressure from all sides really. Um, and so, you know, they really are vital in shaping the, mem uh, the member or customer experience. But if it's done right, it can really secure the hope for future, future referrals. Um, and, you know, their role really is to support the loan officer, um, even the most difficult loan officers. Our best processors can provide calm and answers during the most challenging situations and really save the, the loan officer from having to deal with alarming and frustrating calls from customers. Uh, our processors also send a final email when the loan is cleared to close, thanking the member for their patience during the process and also relaying their appreciation for using our institution. Um, you know, a lot of uh, the processor experience in uh, dealing with difficult situations just really comes through experience. Um, I think that veteran processors uh, really know how to handle even the most challenging situation.
Well, that's really a great point. And that leads to the question about building rapport uh, through the processor's communications. Many times what you end up seeing with processors, sometimes they will default to emails and not do phone calls. Talk about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you know, the processor has, they're under so much pressure and they have so many timelines to meet that oftentimes they feel like email is the best way to handle a situation. But I always say um, do, a processor should communicate with the customer the way in a manner that the customer prefers. So you do have some cu customers that prefer email. That's their preference. They'd rather see information in writing and then they can respond and ask questions when they have time. But inevitably, a processor has to be prepared to pick up the phone and have, a, have communication with the member, um, explain different scenarios and situations. Some members, some customers really need that personal experience and prefer that personal experience. So processors have to not only have good writing skills, but they also need to have very good verbal communication. Well, that's really a good point, which leads to my next question, or my last question, which is looking five, 10 years out, how do you see this role developing? Do you see it taking on more of a communication role or, or talk about your insights about that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, when you think about it, the customer is now spending so much more time with the processor than they are with the loan officer. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, the uh, processor role, whereas in the past, a processor was just a paper chaser. You know, it's like gather the documentation, put it in the file and move the file along. Uh, but that is definitely no longer the case. And I think that um, the processor has to have excellent uh, customer service skills and really excellent social skills and it, it really is difficult in this time of social media and texting and emails but the very best processors have to have the very best social skills well Denise, and i appreciate all those comments that you made today they were certainly great thanks so much thank you pat